Hi guys, welcome back. Um, this video is going to be pretty quick. Um, I came across an interesting trick uh, during the week, um, which I thought would be good to make a little video out of, um, and that's to do with decals, logos, and projection. Um, so let's just open up uh, Matt. And we'll turn off all the glowy stuff. Cool. Now I've made up a logo um, to use as for this example. So I'm going to go import resources and go add resources. I'm going to navigate to my logo. Now you can't see anything here, but it's actually solid red and the decal is in the alpha channel. Um, so what that means, it's going to pre-multiply the top side color with the alpha, um, which is useful, but we can change that after and I'll, sh I'll show you how. So uh, the next part we want to define where this goes. So we're going to make this a texture and there's three options down here, um, which are pretty useful. Uh, current session means that this image is only going to be imported into this session. It won't even save into the save file. Um, so if you're just doing quick temporary things, this is useful. Um, the project option will save it in with the, the save file. So when you hit file save as, it will actually keep it in with the rest of your resources. Or well, the final option, if it's something you want to reuse, like a stamp that you would reuse all the time, you can import it directly to your shelf. So this little option here is, is really useful. Um, but just for today, I just want it in this current session. So we'll import this. Now you can see here that um, this is the red logo that's been pre-multiplied against the alpha. So that's why we're seeing it like this. And let's just jump to projection mode. Um, and we're gonna scroll down. And I just want to project color for this example. So I'm going to turn off the extra channels and I'm going to take my logo and drag and drop it into here. And now we can see the projection um, setup has, has come here. Now, if you hold S on the keyboard, which is the default shortcut, you can now resize and move and rotate this. If you hold shift, it sort of locks it 90 degrees. Um, and if you see this repeating, this is normal behavior. Um, I know Allogrithmic are working on their projection setup at the moment, um, especially with non-square images. It's a real pain of like, this is a 2K square image um, that's been prepared for projection in substance. But if you had a non-square image, it would stretch it to be square. So um, just, be, just be aware of that. So... So I've got this lined up. Um, I'm going to change to the orthographic view as well. Um, and just using shift as well, I'm going to snap his head to the, the front. Cool. So now I've got the lineup that I want. Um, something else I'm going to do is currently I have just a normal brush with fall off. Now, if anyone knows a way that I can just stamp like you do in Mari, um, that would be awesome. Um, but I don't know if there's a way. So the way I've been going about this is by picking the square alpha uh, brush, which is in here. Um, where there's a brick shape, there's a square one. There it is, where? <clears throat> so this is nice and solid, so we don't get any um, fall off. So it's literally just like a straight on, no fall off, nothing. So, so cool. So we've got that on there. Now we can jump out and we can see it's stuck on there. Cool. So now on this channel, I'm gonna call this logo base. Now there's a cool trick that I uh, figured out during the week using anchor points that will allow us to adjust this afterwards and give us quite a lot of control, uh, which is really cool. So I'm going to 
right click on here and go add anchor point. Um, the name can stay the same, that's fine. Now I'm going to make a new fill channel and create a black mask. And the mask, I'm going to fill that with the anchor point. Now, what that allows us to do, um, oh yes, there's one thing I forgot. Well, now there's interpretation of the alpha here, which is kind of interesting um, and it is useful. Now you can sort of see uh, where it says mask. See how it's gray? Now we've got different options because we're working with an alpha here. So we can either extract the alpha, which is pretty much what you want to do. Um, or there's default background color, which gives us this like mid gray. But in this, in this case, we want to extract, extract the alpha so that we can use it as like a solid mask. So now what we'll do, um, let's just put a smart material underneath this, um, fabric, superhero fabric. Yep. Cool. So now we can see that this fill layer is acting almost like a replacement for the logo base. Now we can, this opens up a lot of control and possibilities like we can disable the color and keep the original color but now we have control over the secondary maps like roughness and normals and height and that sort of thing or we can actually now disable this because the anchor point is still going to be red and replace it with another color so if the client gives us a, a logo which is hyper pink or something and it's like hmm that doesn't look very nice. Um, we can really easily change it just in Substance Painter without having to like go back into Photoshop or Nuke or some other stupid thing just to just to adjust something simple like the color. So it's really cool, really quick. Um, so um, let's just put another example out here. So let's say I want this logo to pop out from uh, this base material. So we can see we've got this honeycomb sort of normal map happening here. But what if we want this to sit on top of this, to sit proud of it? So um, I'm going to make this red. Um, yeah, that's fine. It's orange. Um, and we'll make it metallic. Ooh. And let's let's change the normal so that this doesn't blend. So the way we do that is by going to the normal channel and just hit normal and normal. Ah, oh, that must be on the height. Okay, and normal. Yep. Cool. So now we can see this, this is not being affected by what's happening underneath. So at this point, we can either raise this up or down using the um, alpha that's there directly. Um, so we'll raise it up a bit and go, yeah, that's, that's cool. But what if we want to emboss it slightly? Like the, um, to get a nicer bump effect, we'd, we'd have to sort of create an embossing sort of effect. So what we can do is now this is a fill channel. Any of these filters will also work. Oops. Um, so let's add a blur filter. And we'll drop that intensity back. Just very subtle. Yeah, cool. So here's the, the mask. So we can see because we're we're blurring it just just subtly, we're creating like an embossed effect. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. Like um, this would be really useful for all sorts of things. Um, uh, but yeah, like tons and tons of control 
um, just from that simple little trick. Um, and the, of course, there's a, a number of other things we could do. We could replace the base color with a procedural and get noise through it and build up complexity. We can now add like independent roughness mapping. So if we want this like really shiny, it looks very superhero-y, doesn't it? Um, we can do things like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's my trick for this week. It's only short, um, short video this week. I'll try and keep them shorter and to the point um, as opposed to the last video, which was 40 something minutes long, but <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I hope this helped you guys and um, yeah, any questions, comments, leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Of course, before I forget, um, Big shout out to Allegrithmic for sponsoring this uh, video. Um, those guys are absolutely awesome and they're on it. So um, yeah, make sure you go and check out the Allegrithmic website. If you haven't already, download a copy of Substance Painter to try for yourself. Um, and yeah, they're doing really good things. So um, definitely check them out. Thanks.